I mean, I have a little visitor here. This is Archie's wonderful cat, who's more like a dog, actually, Laney. Um, Laney is just over three years old and a most wonderful. I know, like people say, I'm not a cat person, I'm a dog person, but uh, you can hang around this cat for even half a day and you'll be a cat person. She's quite wonderful. Not that my cats aren't wonderful, but they do have very cat-like qualities. This one really is like a dog. Anyways, uh, guess what? When you're done this week, okay, and we're in week number nine, you will have completed two-thirds of the 12-week workout challenge. Um, you might do one workout, you might do two workouts, you can do maximum three workouts. These are getting to be really intense. Last week was hard, I know, and this week's going to be a little bit harder, a little bit more challenging. But again, remember, you work at your own pace. I'm going to give you options, some new, some like the ones I've been giving you to tone it down or to ramp it up. So remember, joint pain, bad. Knees, ankles, hips, shoulders, elbows. Mainly, if you're gonna have joint pain, it's mostly gonna present in the shoulders of the knees, um, secondarily in the hips, and then periodically in the ankles or in the elbows. And elbows is usually like tendonitis. So for example, I've got some tendonitis, I've got some uh, tennis elbow going on here. You may have golfer's elbow, you have some other stuff going on as well, but for the most part, we're talking about shoulders and knees and hips when we talk about joint pain. Joint pain's always bad. So, as I've been saying, you're working out at your own pace and to your own ability. Please, if you're experiencing any joint pain, back the exercise off. Either reduce the range of motion, and I'll show you how to do that as we're doing the workout, and as I'm describing the exercises, or choose an exercise, excuse me, that is less intense less difficult, okay? So, five exercises as usual. We're gonna go anywhere from 30 seconds to one minute. I'm gonna demonstrate the exercises for one minute. Remember, um, you go at your own pace. Do 30 seconds, do 45 seconds, do only 20 seconds, whatever it is that you can do. If you've made it here to week eight, you have improved, okay? I'll guarantee you, your cardiovascular capacity has improved, your balance has improved, your endurance has improved, your strength has improved, and you've probably improved your muscle tone. And I know that because these workouts are designed to do all that systematically, so you don't have to think about it, okay? So what are we doing today? Well, the first one is the dreaded burpee, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do burpees four different ways to make them easier, okay? And still, if the burpee's too much, again, I'm going to show you other exercises that you can do so you don't have to do the burpee. But if you can, if you're at the level where uh, jumping is okay for you, then I'm going to invite you to do it. Now, notice when I jump, I'm not going to be able to jump too high because I'm going to hit my head on this bulkhead here as I demonstrate this exercise. And I'm not going to be able to throw my hands up. But when you do a burpee and you're coming up, I would like you to, if you can, throw your hands up and jump. Again, remember, if your joints can handle this. This is a very bouncy motion, right? It might not be for some, it might not be for many. Choose wisely what you want to do, okay? So the full burpee looks like this. I'm going to do it in slow motion a few times, and I'm going to speed it up and show you what it looks like at full speed, okay? So you come down into a push-up position. You jump back. You do a push-up, if you can. You can also do them on your knees, right? And from here, you jump forward, and you launch yourself up. And again, this is where I can't jump too high. I'm going to hit my head but you launch yourself up and throw your hands up, okay? So a little quicker, you come down, throw the legs out, push up, up, and jump. A little quicker, down, up, down, up, back, and jump, okay? And again, I normally throw my hands up, I don't wanna kill myself. Now you can also do the burpee, okay, to tone it down one, is you, you don't have to do the push up part. So what that would look like is this. You come down, put the legs out, come right back up, and you jump up, so you don't do the push-up part, okay? Or, if you want to, you can even cut out the jumping up and down part, which is you go down and you jump forward, back, forward, back. These are like frog jumps, okay? So I call it like a half burpee, but it's really a frog jump, okay? It still has that bouncy quality, and by the way, I came across some good research this week that shows that when you make the exercises, you're doing a little snappier. So you've heard me these past few weeks talking about getting snappier. 
in your movements. What you're doing is you're creating power. And power is the number one thing that's correlated with uh, longevity as far as health goes, being able to do functional things like get in and out of a chair, in and out of a car, that sort of thing. When you train for power, and not necessarily with a lot of weight at all, or going for a lot of strength, you're gonna get probably just about as much benefit as you would get if you were lifting heavier weights. That's what the research shows, okay? So when we're doing these movements, we wanna make them snappy as we can, okay? So, the three options for a burpee are the full burpee, which is down, out, push up, up, forward, and jump. And again, throw your hands up. The second option is down, up, and jump. No push up, okay? The third option is just the frog jump. Back, forward, back, forward, back, forward. At a pace, at a speed, that's good for you, okay? Fourth option is what's called a chair burpee. So what you do is you start from the chair and you, you have your feet kind of off the ground a bit. And if you can, prop yourself intentionally out of the chair and jump up, okay? So jump, come back, rock back, rock forward and jump, rock back, rock forward and jump, rock back, okay? If that's too much, no big deal. Just practice getting in and out of a chair. This is a great way to develop your squat strength, okay? Notice, whenever I talk about squats, I talk about my knees being parallel to the ground. Well, guess what? In this chair, or not my knees, my, sorry, my, um, my thighs. Uh, as I sit in this chair, my thighs are parallel to the ground, right? So practice, hands up here like this, rocking forward, coming up out of the chair. Sitting back down nice and slow. Try and control it until you're sitting in the chair nicely and softly, okay? So try and avoid, if you can, rocking too far forward and coming over on your toes. Try and stay on your heels as much as you can. And as you come down, stay on those heels and try not to fall into the chair. Try and control it as much as you can. So, forward and down. Rock forward and down. Again, I'm trying to be snappy. Okay, as I come up, snappy, nice and slow, fast up in the contraction, slow down, fast up, slow down. Excuse me just a second, I'm bleeding a little bit because a cat and me were having a little bit of a, we're having fun, play fun, but cats have claws and humans don't, so I found that out, I was reminded of that the hard way, so. Anyways, if that's too much, Practice really slow, leaning as far forward as you need to, to come out of the chair. If that's too much, practice using a higher chair, okay? These are nice, gentle squats. You don't have to worry about being snappy if you don't want to. If you can, do it because that's what develops power and that's what really is good for longevity as far as the ability to use your body functionally. And by the way, when I talk about functional movements, I'm talking about standing, sitting, picking things up off the ground, putting them on shelves, twisting, and carrying things while we're walking, okay? So you're gonna see more and more exercises as we finish this thing up in the next few weeks that are designed to do all these things. That's functional lifting, okay? And I'm talking about functionality in the sense of being able to move around in the world for as long as possible with freedom and you know being able to do whatever you want okay if someone's a bodybuilder and they come to me and they want to do functional training functional training for them is training that makes them the most muscular possible and it's not the same as the kind of training we're doing here so functional training i have to kind of put a footnote on it and say when i say functional i'm talking about the function that the person who comes to me the, the goal they want to achieve, right? So we match the training to their goal and that's functional training for them. What I'm assuming here is that everybody wants general fitness and to build their body so that they can be maximally effective as they move around in the world. That's what we're doing here. So if you can, you do the full burpee, okay? If you can't, you do the, the three-quarter burpee, which is the one without the push-up. If you can't do that, you do the frog jump or the one-half burpee. If you can't do that, 
you do the chair burpee. Uh, if you can't do the chair burpee, you do snappy squats out of the chair. If you can't do snappy, then do it slower, okay? And again, if you can't do those, no problem. Just do the donkey kicks that we've done in the past so many times, okay? Alternating legs or straight legs, if bending the knees bothers you, you can also do hip flexion for a set if you want. Be snappy if you can, right? Snappy if you can. You can do round the clock. Snap it, snap it. Out to the side, up to the front. You can hold on to something and you can progress by starting out holding on to something and then trying not to hold on to something, okay? So look, tons of options for the first exercise, okay? Second exercise is the old standard bent row, okay? And I really, I'm big on this because it's postural and I want you to really focus on as you do it. Again, nice tight core, expanded chest, bent over, fully expanded, and you're squeezing those shoulder blades, pulling those elbows to the ceiling, okay? I'm not demonstrating with weights, but you can use weights. You can use a band in the door if you want. You can use uh, water bottles. You can use cans. You can use two kettlebells that weigh the same thing. Remember, whatever you choose, if you're gonna choose weights, choose weights that weigh the same as each other, okay? So that's our second exercise. And again, you know, if bending over is too much, then do it with or without a band in a doorway or around a post. And without a band, you just really want to focus on squeezing those shoulder blades at the end, separate them here, squeeze them there, pull them apart, separate them. So if you see the shoulder blades on my back, they come forward as I'm forward like this, and they come together as I pull back, okay? Forward, back, forward, back, and apart, together, apart, together, okay? So you can do that standing up, unloaded with no weight, if that works for you, okay? Next one. I think we may have done this before, but I can't remember. We've done so many different exercises. And I'm going to recommend that at first you do it holding on to something because there's a lot of instability here. Remember, we're also trying to build balance and coordination and something called proprioception. Fancy word meaning figuring out and knowing where my body is in space and time. Okay? So the straight leg deadlift is when I keep my legs straight and I bend over, holding on to weight or not, and I stand up keeping my legs pretty straight. The knees are bent just a bit, but it's not like a squat, okay? It's just a bending at the knees and coming up. Single leg, more challenging, right? If I'm gonna do this without a chair, I bend this leg, keep this leg straight, pick a point on the wall, and as I bend over, I'm watching that point, and then I'm coming up. Try not to put my foot on the ground at the end, okay? Over and up, and you can alternate. Over and up. It's more challenging if you alternate. Over and up, over, up, down, up. I can hold on to weights when I do this or not, but if that's too challenging, you can lightly put your hand on a chair or something just to balance yourself, okay? And again, you wanna go as fast as you can, but don't go too fast, because if you go really fast, you're gonna topple over. And by the way, the most likely direction you'll topple over in when you come up is in the direction of the leg that's coming up. So you want to remember that. You want to compensate by leaning a bit away from that leg as you come up. Okay, and if you're alternating, make sure you're leaning that way, leaning this way, too much, leaning that way, leaning this way, okay? You see, even there, I got a little unstable there. And that happened because I took my eye off of a, uh, uh, a point, remaining fixated on a point. Um, next one, reverse hyperextensions. We've done these before. This is also an exercise to assist you with your posture. Okay, so remember, we're trying to do a lot of things here. Endurance, strength, muscle tone, balance, and posture. All these things are very important. I'm trying to keep them all in these routines for you, okay? So I can't know exactly what your particular struggle is, but I do know that if you do all these things, we'll touch on all those elements, and you'll get better overall. Now, you remember last week, in one of the days, it was day two, we were doing back extensions because I really wanted to work on spinal extension, okay? Because pulling your shoulder blades together is one part of a good posture, but also standing up nice and straight and not being slumped over. So extending my spine is another um, aspect of good posture. Something to keep in mind though, and I didn't talk about it last week, is that the curve in your lower back, your spine, 
is supposed to be a, a slight C curve on about a two degree arc facing that way. Many people have an excessive curve like this. I do. I'm exaggerating mine right now, okay? But they have an excessive curve and their pelvis is tilted forward and it's often because of tight hip flexors. So hip flexor um, stretching, and I'll put a stretch on here today for hip flexors, is important. Um, and also there's another activation movement that I'm going to record a video for, I just learned it, that can help you loosen your hip flexors, okay? So this is, this is gonna be important for you straightening out your posture. So in one sense, I want you training spinal extension, but in another sense, I don't want you overextending or hyperextending. So when you're doing this exercise here, the reverse hyperextension, if you remember, you're over an ottoman or a chair or a ball like this, if you can, what you want to do is you want to squeeze your, but keep your legs straight, squeeze your butt until you feel your butt totally squeezed and your legs come up as far as they can. What you don't want to do is really arch your back and throw them up too high, okay? Don't go into excessive spinal extension, okay? Just really, you know, kind of support the extension that you have. If you are slouched like this naturally, you're going to find naturally as you squeeze your butt cheeks together, your pelvis tilts posteriorly and is going to reduce, or sorry, your, I'm trying to think about this, hang on a sec. Your pelvis will tilt posteriorly, yes, and it will reduce the amount of spinal extension, but at the same time, as you're bringing your legs up and you're up like this, keeping your arms straight, you will maintain spinal extension. So you can assume that as long as you don't come up any higher than your butt's fully squeezed, you're going to be fine, okay? So down, breathe in, up, down, up, down. Now, for those of you who don't have a chair that they could use, or a ball, or an ottoman, not a problem. What I'm going to invite you to do is I'm going to invite just to do a good morning, okay? Bend over, come up. So it's just like a straight leg deadlift, but with your hands up here. And the thing about having your hands up here is that, again, your chest is expanded, and you're in a prime position to hold your spine in extension when you come down here, which is where it's most likely to slouch over like this, okay? So as long as you're like this, you're probably gonna have the right position, okay? So get those elbows back so that you can have your spine nice and extended, good for posture, okay? And finally, new exercise on the last one. This is really only for people who have good knees. Um, if you want to, hold on to a weight. I have like sandbags or I can hold on to a dumbbell. And what you do is you get down on your knees Sit back on your heels, hold on to the weight, and come up. Squeeze your butt to bring yourself up, okay? Squeeze, come up, down. Squeeze, down. Squeeze, if you have your hands up like this, again, you're gonna be supporting good spinal extension, okay? Good spinal mechanics. So today's exercise really has good components for balance, for power, for strength, designed to help you build muscle and tone, and yes, we want to build muscle to tone, we don't need to be afraid of building muscle, and uh, um, power, strength, uh, balance, I think I covered it all, oh, and posture, posture, right, okay, so get ready, I'm going to grab my stopwatch, that was a lot of explanation, sorry, but I think today needed it, I'm going to set the timer for one minute, remember, you do not have to do one minute, okay? Do whatever it is you're comfortable with. Uh, let's see here. Uh, one minute. Cancel. If you can only do 20 seconds, if you can only do 30 seconds, 40, 45, whatever, that's the, uh, the level you're working at. And remember, because this is a video, you can always pause it. So if you need to stop in between exercises or longer in between sets, hit that pause button. Remember, you're competing against you. You've heard me say it. Sorry, I sound like a broken record, but I need to keep saying it, okay? So, hopefully my finger has stopped bleeding. I'm a guy, I play with animals, what can I say? And then I get scratched. 
I just can't complain about it. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're gonna do the burpees, okay? So down, out, push up, 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 and jump. Down, out, push up, 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 and jump. Now, three quarter burpee, no push up, and jump, okay? No push up, and jump, or just frog jumps. Okay, or rock backwards, jump up, rock backwards, jump up, chair burpees, backwards, up, try to launch from your heels, okay, or fast squats out of the chair, snappy, if you can, not so snappy, okay, nice and slow and controlled, do whatever it is you can do, okay, or all the usual suspects, but trying to be snappy, if you can, Okay, snappy as possible, but look at all the different options you have, the leg circles, right? There we go, one minute. Okay, and maybe boring because we do it all the time, but again, good for posture is the bent row. Keep that back nice and straight. Pulling the elbows to the sky, and you're pulling your shoulder blades together, separating them. Together, separate. Together, separate. Together, separate, okay? Bending over is no good. Do it standing up, with or without a band. If there's no band, especially focus on squeezing the shoulder blades, letting them go. Squeeze, let them go, you're breathing. And you know, you can row with your hands facing down, which is a prone grip, together, which is a neutral grip, facing the ceiling which is a supine grip, or you can cycle through 180 degrees as you roll. Mix it up, do it differently all the time, okay? Keep it fun, keep it interesting, and know that you're working the different muscles involved in this movement differently, depending on the orientation of your hands. Okay, straight leg deadlift. You may be really good at balance, you may be strong, hold on to weights, down. Switch sides, remember to transfer your weight this way, this way. Try and pause at the top, right? Pause, hold it, see if you're balanced. Pause, pause. Go down really low, really low. Again, you can hold on to something if you need to, or if that's too much, just do regular with both legs deadlifts, okay? But remember, if you keep your hands down, don't slouch. We want to focus on the orientation of the spine, okay? We want to have a nice, partially extended spine so we got good posture, especially at the top. When you come to the top, pull those shoulder blades together, okay? Keep them together at the bottom, but really focus on pulling them together at the top. One leg, other leg, one leg, okay? Let's see. What do we got next? A reverse hyperextension. I'm going to grab the ball. I know many of you will have equipment for this, but remember, keep these arms straight and locked. Squeeze the butt. Keep the legs straight. Pause at the top for a second. Pause. Down. Pause. Down. Pause. Down. Okay. Now you got the rhythm. Some of you don't have the ball. Not a problem. Just do the good mornings. With your hands up this time, okay? So it's not with your arms down like a deadlift. A good morning is where you have the weight on your back. So you would do this uh, barbell good morning would be like with a barbell on your back, okay? Breathe in, out, in, out. Good shoulder blade squeeze at the top. Good posture. Remember, we're focusing on posture more and more now, okay? And if that's too much, you know, all the usual suspect, to the sides, to the sides. Okay, great. All right, what do we got? Oh, the zercher squat, good. Okay, holding onto your weight if you want. Down on your knees, and up, down. Up, squeeze that butt, down. Up, down, I should get a mat. This is a, these are hard rubber mats, hard on the knees. I'll get a mat for the next set, it's okay. I've done enough karate in my time. At my knees on a hard wooden floor, that's okay. But if this is too much, not a problem. Let's just go back to squats, okay? 
regular squats. Don't even have to use the chair. Stay on the heels. Half squats if you need to. Not a problem. Okay? Or again, choose one of the other options. Okay? So if on the fourth exercise you choose like snappy uh, donkey kicks, choose snappy hip flexion. Okay? Or snappy abduction. Choose something different so that you're working a different muscle. Right? But and oh, again, if you can't do snappy, that's okay, do slow, right? I'm pushing snappy for power, but slow is good if you can't do snappy. But be as snappy as you can. Okay, there we go. That is step number one. How did that feel? The burpees, I know everybody, when they hear burpees, they go, oh, burpees. I don't know if my friend Nina McDermott's going to be watching this video, but she started doing burpees. Uh, when COVID, when COVID lockdown started, she started doing, what was it, 100 burpees a day, and then 100 sit-ups, and 100, she's just, this woman is phenomenal, okay? She is in fantastic shape, she looks great, married to a real great guy, Warren, and oh my God, is she ever an inspiration. Um, she didn't miss, she has not missed a day, no matter what, she's done it. Um, so she is kind of what it means to be committed. But that being said, what I want to say is some of you may not be as situated as she is to do your workout every single day or every day you say you're going to do it for whatever reason. Some of us struggle with emotional, mental, physical stuff. I'm always going to encourage you, give yourself a break where you need to. My clients know I'm very big on letting yourself off the hook when doing exercise seems too challenging, too scary, okay? What I'll do is if people start going into their workout, and I do this with myself too, because I really push myself hard, and sometimes it becomes overwhelming. I'll ask myself, what's the anxiety level of me going into this workout? Am I like three, four out of 10 anxious? That's okay, right? But if I find myself six, seven, eight, nine, or 10 out of 10 anxious, then I have to look at the workout that I'm doing. Because it might be my body or my brain telling me something. It might be telling me that I'm working too hard, I'm working beyond a level that I should be working right now. Listen to that. So if you start to feel anxiety around these workouts, ask yourself, how high is that anxiety? Is it more than three or four out of 10? And if it is, then I'm gonna invite you to tone it right down up to and including maybe taking a day off, maybe taking a week off. Do whatever you need to do to ensure that you're gonna get back at it. Okay, all right, here we go. Oh, good fingers still not bleeding. Burpees, okay, out, push up, up, hoop. Can you see me? Yeah, okay. Up, three quarter burpee, no push up, but I'm doing the jump, okay. And then just the frog jumps, back, up, back, up, back, up. Or chair burpees, rock back, up, rock back. Or snappy squats out of the chair. Snappy squats. Or not so snappy. Okay? Whatever works. Snappy donkey kicks. Snappy hip flexors. Snappy abduction. Leg circles. Keep the leg off the ground if you can. Leg circles. Keep the leg off the ground. Go back the other way. Leg off the ground. Go back the other way. Okay? Mix it up. Okay, bend row, grab your dumbbells, or not, bend over, chest out, core tight, shoulder blades together, elbows to the ceiling, and row. Or standing, with or without a band, squeeze, let go, squeeze, let go, talking about the shoulder blades, Slow it down if you need to. Or you can do these in a chair, by the way, right? If your standing gets to be too much after a while, because a lot of these exercises are standing up, do them in a chair. You can also do bent row in a chair if you like. You should keep that back nice and straight, though. Okay, I have tight glutes and tight hamstrings, so my lower back, you see, it tends to want to round like this. I really fight that. And remember, don't look way back like this, okay? 
Look down on the ground at an angle so that your spine is nice and straight. Okie doke. Straight leg deadlift. Here we go. Zoom. Right? Zoom. Hold. Test that balance. Test that balance. Test that balance. Is there a side? If you're doing the single leg, you're holding onto a weight or not, is there a side you find easier? I find this side easier. This side wants to be less stable for some reason. And it's good to do single leg exercises like this or isolateral exercises, fancy name for meaning doing one side at a time, so that we can find out if there's any imbalances. Notice if you have any imbalances. And if you need to, reach out to me and I can help you with them, okay? But can't do those, not a problem. Both legs, but don't slouch. Don't slouch at the bottom, keep that back straight. Okay, squeeze those shoulder blades at the top. And, you know, all the other usual suspects. Oh, can't bend my knees, that's okay. You can still be snappy with a straight leg on a straight leg donkey kick. Alrighty. Reverse hyper extension. So again, your upper body locked in place, squeeze the butt, let it go. Squeeze, let it go. Don't bend the knees, okay? This is the butt doing the work. Believe it or not, mostly the butt and some of the hamstrings are working here to pull my legs up. It's mostly my butt, okay? My butt's stretched, contracted. Stretched, contracted, okay? Or, if that doesn't work, remember we're doing just regular good mornings. This time, my hands up. Not a straight leg deadlift, but a good morning, okay? All right, the Zercher squat. These are Zercher squats on Knees, a zercher squat is a regular one done standing up where you're holding a weight in front of you like this. These ones I'm doing on my knees on purpose to work my glutes, snap them. Keep your body straight up. Ideal if you hold the weight. So the glutes are really strong, okay? This is a short range of motion, so if you do hold on to some weight, I think you'll find it challenging enough. I'll give you a sneak preview. Next week we're going to progress this. Up, 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 squat, down, 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 up, up, I'm staying down low, low, squat, down, down, down. That's for next week, okay? This or just regular or half squats for this week, okay? That's a spoiler alert. Don't run away, come back. I promise I'll give you all the other options if that looks a little too scary. Okay. There it is. All right. One more set, and then we are done. Our eighth working week, our ninth actual training week, day one. So this is week nine, day one of the 12 week uh, Fit and 20 workout challenge. How are you finding it? Don't forget to write in the comments below whether you're liking it, whether you're hating it. Some of you might be, excuse me, finding that I'm progressing too quickly. Um, and remember, generally speaking, if that's what you're thinking, it's because you're focusing on the primary exercises and not all of the regressions. Okay, there's regressions and progressions, so like full burpee to three-quarter burpee to the frog jumps to the chair burpee to the snappy chair squat to the regular chair squat and then to the other, like the donkey kicks and the hip flexion, okay? Don't look at the hardest exercise, look at the full range of exercises and look what's available to you. And then just try and make it a little more challenging for you each time, okay? But don't get too daunted, don't be too afraid if the primary exercises look like they're getting out of hand. Remember, you can always do the other ones, okay? Work at your own pace. I find that people tend to fall off in these like three month workout programs because it does get harder and harder and then it just gets scarier and scarier, okay? Don't let this stuff scare you. Go back to the test that I gave you at the last break, which is how much anxiety does the thought of doing these workouts induce in you if it's more than three to four out of 10? 
then look at the exercises I'm offering and say to yourself, I'm only going to do uh, one that's in the middle, for example. I'm not going to do that full burpee. I'm just going to do a chair burpee. Okay, give yourself a break. And then if you find that too easy, do one up. Do the half burpee, the frog jump, or the, um, the three-quarter burpee, okay? So, but tone it down a notch. Give yourself a break. Most of us are not good at doing that. All right, we're ready to go. Last set, burpees. Here we go. Okay, down, out, push up, up, and jump. Down, out, push up. Up and jump. I should be standing up straighter, by the way. I really can't. I don't have a big ceiling here. No push ups. Three quarter burpee. Okay, or frog jump. Chair burpee. Rock back in the chair. Up and out. Up and out and jump. Rock back. Rock forward. Rock back. Now, as you're rocking, keep that posture. Keep that core tight. Keep that chest out. Okay? Snappy squats if that's too much. So my breathing. Easier squats. Nice and slow. Okay? Or just regular squats. Right? Full. Half. Whatever works. Okay? Be gentle on you. Okay? We want to do these workouts. We want to be able to do them. We don't want them to be too scary. Bent row. Pulling the shoulder blades together, pulling my elbows to the ceiling, band in the door, or not, right? Or doing them bent over in the chair for support. We're just sitting up, focusing on squeezing. Expanding the shoulder blade, squeezing, expanding, squeeze, expand, okay? Work at your level. We want you to be able to keep doing these workouts. But remember, try and be snappy if you can. Snappy, slow going back, snappy. And pause at the end briefly. <sighs> Trying to develop that power. Power is a thing, it's gonna keep you moving around in the world for longer. Keep you more independent for longer. You know, I'm 54 years old. I need to start thinking about these things. Okay, straight leg deadlift. Okay, down, up, down, up, down, up. Holding at the top briefly. Hold. Check my balance. Check my balance. Check. Okay, can hold on to something if I need to. If that's too much. Both legs. Don't bend the knees, it's not a squat. You're just bending at the waist, hinging at the hips, okay? Keep that chest out, core tight. Notice where my eyes go, okay? My head isn't like this, not good for my neck, okay? My eyes are following my hands, okay? My spine is straight with the full range of motion, okay? Nope, this is, sorry, hands down. It's a Romanian deadlift, right? Okay, almost there. A few more seconds. All right. Where's hyperextension? My ball is over here. Okay. Remember, it's the butt you're squeezing down. Keeping the legs straight. too much, not a problem. We do those good mornings. My hands up here. Pull my shoulder blades together, making sure my chest is nice, straight, my back is nice and straight. Okay, there we go, last exercise. This is it, how are you feeling? The Zercher squat on your knees. There we 
we go. Up, down, up, good squeeze. Down, keep that back straight at the bottom. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay? And if that's too much, not a problem. You can go back to regular squats or half squats. Let me snap you with that butt contraction at the top of the way. Squeeze the butt cheeks. Squeeze them. Squeeze them. Or, usual suspect, snappy. Snappy or not. Straight leg. If your knees are bugging you. Okay? Same thing. You can do hip flexion, bending the knees, or hip flexion, straight leg. Out to the side. Snappy if you can. If snappy doesn't work, just do it nice and controlled. Make sure you're holding on to something if you need to. Okay? Go around the clock, circles, and there we go, folks. That is it for week nine, day one, the 12 week Fit 20 workout challenge. Don't forget, comments are always appreciated. If some of these exercises didn't work for you, and all of the suggested alternatives were either maybe too boring or they just aren't cutting it, reach out. There's a way to do it. I know hundreds of exercises, and there's lots. That we can do. I try to not throw too many new exercises at you every week, although every week you are getting new exercises. So in some of the exercises that we keep repeating week after week, you may find you're starting to get bored. Not a problem. Just reach out to me. We'll figure out a workaround, okay? So comments, questions are always welcome, and we will see you Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. That's when I will be posting week 9, day 2, of the Fit in 2012 Week Workout Challenge. We will see you then.